which battery operated power supply is best for our project? In this video I have 10 boards for the Raspberry Pi as well as for Arduino, ESP and STM32 boards. We will compare their features, find out the differences and test them. Because of the test results we will not stop there. We will design our own superpower branded battery power supply. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Which features should an ideal power supply have? 3.3 volt output, 5 volt USB output, USB charging, solar charging, charging while powering a device, replaceable batteries, Li-Yon or LiFePO4 chemistry, variable number of batteries, battery low voltage protection, low voltage signal for MCU, a voltmeter, ampere meter, small self-discharge, charge indicator, can be used as a shield for a Raspberry, an ESP or even an Arduino. Maybe you can add more features that are essential for you. You will get this chance later in the video. This is a long list. For a particular project, some of these features are more important than others. This is why we need an overview. And this is why I bought these products. Three single cell modules, all with 5 volts output and two also with 3.3 volts. Five two cell modules in different configurations. One module with a flat Li-Yon battery and one module with four 18650 cells. I checked them out and made this table with their features. I also added the chips used for the different functions. This is important to understand how they work. And maybe later for our superpower boards. I could have included power banks. However, most of them cannot be used for our purpose because they switch automatically off at low currents or they stop providing energy while charging. So let's start with the building blocks of battery operated power supplies. The obvious block is the battery. All tested modules use Li-Yon batteries with a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts. All but one use replaceable 18650 or the smaller 16340 batteries. I like this concept because you can choose your favorite battery type and you can replace a defective battery without problems. And you will get this format also in the future. To add capacity, some of the boards add cells in parallel. Like that, you omit the need for balancing and you decide how many batteries you want to insert. All run also with a single cell. The batteries have to be charged and protected from overcharging. The most popular IC for this function is the TP4056. It is made for 5V USB as input, but in video number 155 it was also very good with 6V solar panels. These chips all have the needed stuff to give Li-Yon batteries a long life, like maximum current and overvoltage protection. One thing, however, is not included, protection against deep discharge. This is very important if you want a long life for your Lyon cells. A standard setup for this function is a DW01 and an 8205 dual MOSFET. You find all you need to know about that combination if you watch video number 160. They switch the load off if the battery voltage is below a certain level, sometimes 3 volts and often 2.4 volts. They also protect it against overcurrent. So we have the most critical three blocks for a battery operated device. Now we need one or two more. If we want 3.3 volts, we could connect a low dropout regulator or LDO directly to the battery. Simple and efficient. But if your battery voltage goes below around 3.5 volts, your output voltage starts to drop. This is not a big issue for most MCUs like the ESP8266 or ESP32. They should run on less than 3 volts. 
but Raspberry Pis are very picky and need an absolute constant voltage. Because 5 volts are higher than the battery voltage, we need a boost converter. All boards with 3.3 volt output connect the LDOs to the 5 volt rail and so get a stable 3.3 volts also at low battery levels. But it wastes a lot of energy. Not suitable for low power devices without solar panels. For these booster chips we find a wider variety like the FP6298 or the MT3608 which is interesting because of its high switching frequency. This enables the usage of smaller inductors and capacitors. If we have a closer look at the AP2016, we see that many of these specialized chips come from Chinese manufacturers and are not well documented for Western people. Sometimes information is hard to find. Some modules use completely integrated so-called power bank ICs, like the IP5306. They contain all critical functions except the 3.3 volt regulator. In this spreadsheet we have the data of 10 different boards. But how to go on? We have to specify the needs of our project. A UPS for the Raspberry Pi 4, for example. First, we need protection circuits for the battery against overcharge and undervoltage. Fortunately, all modules provide this functionality. Good. Next, we set the filter to Raspberry and get these two boards. Both can be mounted below the Raspberry Pi. So you still can mount a cooler on the Raspberry. Very good. The maximum current is 3 Ampere and the two batteries can feed a Raspberry for more than 10 hours. Also good. And they can be charged while the Raspberry Pi is running. The newer board has, in addition to the battery functions, a real-time clock and a volt and ampere meter. The volt and ampere meter, unfortunately, is mounted at the output and therefore only measures the USB voltage. Useless for a battery operated Raspberry because we need a signal to shut it down before the battery is dead. Otherwise it crashes and can kill the SD card or lose data. So they gave a big chance away to create a perfect Raspberry UPS. Adding a simple voltage detector for a few cents would have been sufficient. Or at least place the INA219 between the battery and the booster. Let's go on to the next use case. Find a battery for an autonomous ESP8266 or ESP32 project. The ESPs use deep sleep to extend battery life. So we need a very low discharge current when the ESP sleeps. We filter the self-discharge current and find three boards with around 60 microamperes. This current is way too high. This is because all these boards first boost the voltage to 5 volts and then reduce it to 3.3 volts. Beside that, this board has no 3.3 volts and this only provides 3.0 volts. I have no idea why they choose this voltage. So also here we do not find a suitable board. Such a board has to have a much lower idle current and for sure has to provide 3.3 volts because we want to use a bare bone ESP module to save energy. And they must not have such fancy push buttons for on off. These boards often keep switched off after the battery was discharged. A no go for a remote node. We want either no switch at all or a simple mechanical one. Next project. Let's assume we want to extend the battery life with solar energy. Then we need the same specifications as before plus a solar charger, which can accept at least 6 volts from a solar panel. Better would be more. Minimum current is not so important because these days solar panels are no more costly. A single 18650 cell should be okay for most situations. Maybe even a 16340 in areas with lots of sun in winter. But we need 3.3 volts. 
so we can use these four modules with 3.3 volts and a TP4056 charging chip. The T-beam would also be suitable for solar charging. Unfortunately, it has no 3.3 volt output and its CN3065 has no significant advantages compared with a simple TP4056, as shown in video number 155. None of them can signal the MCU low battery voltage if the sun was not strong enough. A pin to connect an analog input to the battery voltage would not cost a fortune. With such a connection, the MCU could measure the voltage and either go to sleep or, if connected to Wi-Fi or LoRa, transmit the voltage level from time to time, as I do this with my light sensor. In Node Red, I use a Telegram bot to alarm me when I have to replace the battery. By the way, here is another trick for connected sensors. My sensors regularly send data. Each time a packet arrives, this timeout node is reset. I set its timeout period to at least twice the time between packets from my sensor. The timeout node is also connected to a Telegram bot, which sends me a message when no packets arrive anymore. I had an occasional software error in my awning remote control, which made that it crashed and did not recover. First, I used my wife as an alarm system. Always, when the awning did not work, she signaled me. Something is wrong, dear Mr. Engineer. With a specific undertone, of course. Since then, I prefer Telegram for that purpose. Now I found the error, and I do no more get alarms. Not from Telegram, and not from my wife. Very good. The same principle is used for my LoRa gateway, by the way. Now it's always up. So what about the other boards? Maybe they fit one of your projects. For me, they are more or less useless. And this is sad. So many boards and none really fit the purpose. This is why I decided to start a new project together with you, my viewers, to design the best power modules for our projects. You can either work on the specifications or if you are good at PCB design or want to become good, work on designing boards. I created a Discord channel called Superpower for the project and a GitHub repository also called Superpower. And I started with my three use cases, an ESP32 boards with an ESP32V ROM module similar to this mini board, but with an 16340 battery and a similar board that can be powered by a solar panel. Both have to have all protections plus voltage supervisor, which resets the MCU if the voltage is below the minimum voltage of the datasheet, and a connection to measure the battery voltage with an analog pin, and a Raspberry Shield for a solar powered Raspberry. With all protections and a voltage supervisor or an analog to digital converter for measuring battery voltage. Here I would like two 18650 batteries because the Raspberry is power hungry. And pins for a GPS module to get the exact time. These are all use cases with requirements. They answer the question what and they have to be finished before we go on to the design phase. The how will be answered by the guys who do the design. Because I want that everybody can get such boards, they will be open source. Their design has to be manufacturable by JLC PCB. And all parts should be LCSC parts. Like that, everybody can order fully assembled boards. This is important because most of the modern chips are hard for hand soldering. I also prepared channels for all building blocks. Parallel to defining the requirements, the designers can start to collect data about the best chips for our designs. There is also a section about boards we can learn from, like the 10 boards I have here. Everybody is invited to participate. If you want to lead one or more of the projects, feel free to contact me. Summarized. There are many boards available to power our projects from a battery. 
9 of 10 boards in my selection use replaceable 18650 or 16340 Lion batteries. None uses LIFEPO 4, which probably is a better technology for 3.3 volt projects. All have the following functions Lion charger, under voltage protector, and 5 volt boost converter. Some also have 3.3 volts LDOs. A few are built as shields, either for raspberries or for Arduinos. One board even has a real-time clock and a voltage and ampere meter. Unfortunately, the meters are at the wrong place and mostly useless. The idle current of all boards is way too high for low-power deep sleep projects. None can read battery voltage nor has a voltage supervisor against low voltage brownouts. None of the boards are suitable for my most common needs. This is why I started a project to create a perfect board. Its name is Superpower. Everybody is invited to participate. If you want to train yourself as a project manager or if you want some visibility for your future job, feel free to apply for a project leader role. We will see where we end and if this time we will get useful products. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.